Algebra 1, Chapter 1, Section 3, Properties of Numbers. We're going to go through four uh, first here. There are more, but let's go through the first four of them. We're going to start with the reflexive property. The reflexive property simply means that, let me draw an arrow there instead of an equal sign. Reflexive property simply means that a number is equal to itself. So 6 would equal 6. That would be the reflexive property. We'll get to some examples here in just a minute. Then we move on to the symmetric property. The symmetric property, think of lines of symmetry like a mirror um, or something reflective. A symmetric property says that no matter what the order is, no matter which way I order it, it's still the same answer. Uh, 2 plus 5 equals 7, and then I could flip that around to be 7 equals 2 plus 5. So it would be the exact same value. Next, we're going to go to transitive. So the transitive property. Transitive is kind of a kind of a three-step. Let's say if I take the numbers um, 2 plus 8, and I know the numbers 5 plus 5 equal the same answer. So if I didn't, if I then went to 5 plus 5 equals 10, because these two are the same, then obviously these two will be the same. So my conclusion would be 2 plus 8 equals 10. Now I know that looks very basic, uh, but just showing you the different properties. Transitive again, three parts. 2 plus 8 equals 5 plus 5. If 5 plus 5 equals 10, then 2 plus 8 must also equal 10 because they're equal to each other. And then finally, we're going to look at the substitution property. Right, substitution is what we use we use quite often. Substitution. Substitution looks something like this. If um, if x equals four, then four x is equal to 4 times 4. I'm just substituting in that value, giving me an answer of 16. Now we're going to go to additive identity. additive identity and think to yourself what can I add to a number that's going to keep it itself okay let's get back to it I just had a knock at the door so I had to answer something we're looking at additive identity what can we add to anything that doesn't change it and that value is zero so let's say I took the number um, seven and I added zero to it the additive identity would tell me that it's the same as 0 plus 7, which means 7 equals 7. So that's additive identity. We also have additive inverse. Additive inverse. And what it means is, what can I add to my number to get 0? So if I had the number 4, I would add a negative 4 to make it 0. Now, remember, whenever we have the plus and the minus, this is really just the same as 4 equals 4. 
or 4 minus 4, excuse me, which also gives me 0. So that takes care of my additive identities. And now we're also going to have multiplicative identities. So the very first one will be just the standard multiplicative identity. Multiplicative. So addition, we added 0 to not change it. When we multiply, what do we do to anything to not change it? We are going to multiply by 1. Anytime we multiply something by 1, it is just going to equal itself. Again, identity is self. Then we have the multiplicative property of 0. That is just what it says. Anytime I multiply something times 0, then it's just going to equal 0. Any number times 0 is 0. Then I have the multiplicative inverse. Now, think of the word inverse. If something is inverted, oh, there went that word. There we go. If something is inverted, then it is upside down. So this is where our reciprocal comes in. If I took the number 4 fifths and I multiplied by its inverse, I flip it upside down, that's always going to give me a value of 1 because the 5 would cancel into the 5, 4 into the 4, giving me a value of 1. So the multiplicative inverse of 2 thirds would be 3 halves. Again, when I multiplied through, I would get 1. Now, for, t um, for the work in class, it's basically order of operations, but what they want us to do is identify each step. Just like we talked about in order of operations, we want to be very specific. So we are going to do order of operations, and in this case, parentheses is first. So I go from that step to this step. Now, I'm going to ask you, what did I do? Did I do an identity? Did I do an inverse? Did I do a property of zeros? Did I do a substitution? Well, everything looks the same except this. Because my value is 1, what I did is I substituted in 1 for 4 minus 3. So this first step was substitution. Substitution. Okay. So my ne next step is I'm going to do multiplication because I have a 7 times 1 here and I have a 5 times 1 fifth. So let's go left to right. 7 times 1 is 7. All right. Now, whenever I multiply anything by itself, or excuse me, anything by 1, that is the multiplicative identity. I multiplied something by 1, and it didn't change its value. So that's multiplicative identity. Then I have subtraction, addition, and multiplication. So I'm going to do multiplication first. So this is 7 minus 1 plus, I multiply in 5 times 1 fifth. 5 is a fraction, it's 5 over 1. So 1 fifth is its inverse. So this is multiplicative inverse. 
And anytime I multiply two numbers by their multiplicative inverse, then I just come out with 1. 5 over 1 times 1 fifth is going to be 1. Okay, now I just go from left to right. 7 minus 1 is going to be 6. Again, I put 6 in for 7 minus 1, so 7 minus 1, so that's substitution. And then finally, 6 plus 1 is 7. Again, that is just substitution. And I will allow you to abbreviate. Okay, let's move on to another example. Okay, now I want you to take this opportunity to look at this problem. Knowing what we did in the last problem, I'm going to go ahead and hit pause. I want you to hit pause as well, and I want you to work this problem on your own. Working each step individually, and once I've done each step, I need to identify which property I used. I'll be back with you in a few minutes when you unpause me. Okay, I'm back. We're going to go through it step by step. Inside the parentheses is going to be first. Inside the parentheses we have multiplication and we have subtraction. So I'm going to do multiplication first, that 4 times 2. That should be our first step. What I did is I substituted 8 in for 4 times 2. Next step, we're still working inside the parentheses. 8 minus 8 gives me 0. So since I'm down to the final number, I can take that outside of the parentheses. Anytime I subtract a number from itself, that's going to be the additive inverse. Now I just need to go left to right. I've got multiplication. I've got a division. That's divide or division. Addition. So I'm going to take 2 times 3 is going to be 6. I'm not even going to bring down that plus 0 because that's not going to do anything to me. So 2 times 3 is 6. That last step, I used substitution. So two-part questions. You've got to have the actual answer and all the steps. And that should do it for Chapter 1, Section 3, Number Properties.